Okay. Uh, again, the uh, seismic survey, they use the reflected wave, not the refracted wave or transmitted wave, because you, do, you don't have uh, a way to, or the method to capture the transmitted wave. It, it will be very difficult because you need to have a receiver in the subsurface otherwise. So normally we use the um, reflected wave from the interface between the layers. So when you have a strong impedance difference between the layers, then you will get this strong signal. And if you have a uh, small difference between the layers, then the reflection will be less than you expect. So you don't capture it very much. So it gives you the idea that the uh, uh, a distinctive layer of the, the geologic structure. Okay? And so we talk about this one. And the impedance of each layer, from the impedance of each layer, like the layer one and layer two, you can calculate the reflection coefficient. And reflection coefficient zero means that there's no impedance mismatch. So if the density and the velocity of layer two and the layer one are the same, then the, this denominator right, becomes zero. So you have the reflection coefficient of the zero. But uh, either one of the layer have the zero impedance, not zero mechanical impedance, then you have the value of one or minus one, right? So then that's the maximum value for the reflection coefficient. So the impedance the definition again is the uh, density times the uh, wave velocity. And uh, we saw these pictures that uh, you have, uh, when you do the uh, offshore exploration, the seismic exploration, you have a source that's generally the air gun, and the air gun form the, and excite the signal, and uh, we will see it, the uh, reflected signal at uh, this hydrophone. This is the uh, type of the geophone uh, in, a, in a way. And, and also you get the uh, signal from the satellite so that you know the, the, where you are located. So the, the position of the, you are doing this survey can be found from this radio and navigation system that's like a GPS system. Yeah, see another picture. And uh, so from the reflective way, so you can kind of uh, draw this kind of a picture actually. So this is the one signal at each line has a one signal and it's all uh, integrated together to get the uh, 2D section. We'll see how we can do that. And, uh, hmm, okay. So the, uh, we talked about this example. The, uh, when you have a P wave transmitting from the water and meeting the, this interface between the uh, soil and the water. Right? And the velocity, in terms of the velocity, water saturated soil will have higher and the faster P wave velocity, right? Right, more than 1,500 meters per second. And the density wise also this is higher. So the impedance in this case, you have the P wave transmitting from low impedance material to the high impedance material. And if you have a gas saturated soil, it's gonna be the opposite case. You have a low impedance material transmitting the P wave and meeting the interface with the high impedance material. And uh, we also talked about the uh, reflection coefficient. And so there is a two types of the reflection coefficient. And this is the stress term, and this is the particle displacement term. And uh, you remember the, uh, the string exercise, right? There was a string uh, when you have a wave transmitting the strain, uh, the string, a string, then the, you have a signal gets inverted and uh, it comes in the uh, same polarity, right? Sometimes you have a reverse polarity and then you have the same polarity. Uh, that's the displacement term because that gives you the deformation of the string. But uh, when you capture the signal using the uh, geophone or the hydrophone, you capture the stress term because you are detecting the stress. Okay? So then reflection coefficient that you're going to use is this is the correct one, okay? the stress term. Okay? Because you're sensing the stress using the sensor when you actually do the experiment in the site. But this 
is the, that we saw from the YouTube video showing the, uh, the string with the wave. Huh? Okay, so hmm. when you have free end, so this is the, just air. Let's imagine that here is the air, this is the rock, and you're pulling the rock from this end. The wave will transmit through the rock, and uh, it meets the interface with the, end of, uh, with, with the air, right? And uh, it feels that this is the what? It's a low impedance material, right? So then, uh, what is the, uh, the Diffraction question in the stress term. That's going to be, we can assume that this is almost zero density for the air, right? So the C2 will be zero here and zero, so that the refraction coefficient in stress term will be minus one, right? so negative one. Okay, so here. And in the case of the fixed end, you have a low impedance to a high impedance, and then mm, let's look at this one, and this will be larger than zero, so it will be the positive value, right? So then reflective wave will have the same polarity in terms of the stress, right? And uh, the, in terms of the displacement, this will have the negative value, so in the case of string with the wave propagation, then the wave becomes uh, inverted in the case of you know, fixed end. So that's what we saw from the video actually. Okay, so the free boundary and fixed boundary. Um, so when you have a free boundary, in terms of the, uh, uh, the displacement, it will be a uh, positive value, so that you have reflective wave with the same priority. But in the for the fixed boundary, it's a negative value, so that you have a inverted wave coming out of the interface. Um, so uh, it's just the, uh, the the summary. So the when you have wave P wave going through the uh, stratum or the geology formation. Generally, with the depth, the stiffness increases and the density also increases, right, with the porosity, so that you have the uh, reflection coefficient, the positive value. And if you meet the somehow the like free gas zone so with the low impedance value, then you will have negative reflection coefficient. So the signal will be inverted. Mm. The boundary between pore sand and the dense tight limestone will have a high reflection coefficient showing up as a prominent reflecting surface. By contrast, the interface between two shale formations of similar impedance will have negligible reflection coefficient. Mm. That's good. So, good. Uh, so let me briefly explain about the uh, piezo elasticity and uh, how we detect the capture the uh, wave at the lab setting and at high frequency. Mm. Okay. So when you look at the ultrasonic transistor we have it there, um, it has a electric, uh, you have a piezo material. And that piezo material is actually found by possibly of Madame Curie, the Pierre Curie. And what it does is that when you apply the force, it converts the mechanical energy to the electrical energy. Okay. So if you put a uh, deform it, then you have a uh, electrical power coming out of the, uh, the material. Okay. And vice versa, if you apply the electrical power or the voltage to the material, then it will deform, okay. uh, corresponding to the, uh, the, the power and the amplitude of the voltage that you apply and the, uh, the frequency. So that's the piezoelectric material, it's called it. And using this one, if you connect it properly with the uh, plus and minus two polarity and you apply the voltage across the piezo material, it deforms. For example, you apply like 10 volt, like the pulse signal, then it's gonna deform like this. Okay? And that gives you the uh, pounding mechanical energy to the media. So it transmits the wave 
and you can act as a source. So you use this PSO material as a source by applying the electrical voltage to this material. And if you put this one into the other hand and as a receiver, then that's going to uh, detect the mechanical wave. And then it will, because it will have a deformation itself by this wave, and that will give you the electrical signal. So you can use this material as a source and the receiver. And uh, depending on the material type and the material mass and size, it gives you the different uh, resonant frequency. For example, uh, if you want to have the low frequency, then it, will, it should have the large mass. Right? The resonant frequency will be low. And if you want to have the high frequency, then the, you can decrease, reduce the mass of the piezo material. Mm. And the measurement concept is like this. So you have a source here and the receiver. And when you propagate the wave, wave, you have an interface between water and material. So it will bounce back. And also, it's going to bounce back at the bottom of the, the chamber. Right? Maybe this can be maybe steel chamber, or maybe just acrylic plastic, or whatever oil and water. Right? So then you have reflection from the bottom like this, reflective wave. Then what can you do? From this, let's say that you have a, this uh, reflection is from the water and material interface. Then travel time from here to here, delta t is the wave, is for the time taken for wave to travel from here to to the, the receiver. Right? So if we say that this is close enough, so D is almost zero, then the, you can identify the length. Right? So the time taken for wave, wave to travel will be 2 times L times velocity of water. Make sense because the velocity is L over delta T. Okay. So from this delta T, from zero to the arrival time, so, uh, then you can convert it to, you can calculate the, uh, the water depth. That's the principle. Okay. And so then, okay. With that in mind, let's do the uh, exercise here. Don't mind, I get you. 다 뒤로 오세요. So you can come back here. I can show you. Look, it's so dark. You've seen it. Seen it. Seen it. Seen it. Seen it. Seen it. Seen 솔지엠웨이스 드는 사람들은 다알것 같은데 뭐한 반쯤은 아시니까 half of you are familiar with the setup and the other half is maybe new. Um, so this is the ultrasonic transistor. I'm not going to take it away, but uh, it's, been, it's connected to the uh, uh, generator. It's the wave generator, the, the one in the bottom. And uh, this is the oscilloscope that captures the wave. Uh, so you can record the wave. Uh, so one is the source and the other is the uh, receiver that I'm using. So if I apply the, the pulsar, the generator, you can see okay. so the pulsar shows that this is the zero point. So this is the uh, time that the source generated the wave. And, uh, and this is the, uh, you can see that this is strongly reflected here, right? This one. This is the reflected signal. So if I actually if I lower it down or increase it, increase it, then it becomes delayed. Huh? So you have a, because the, the water depth is now the increase. Huh? So, and if I lower it down yet, 
then I think it was all around here and now in here, right? So, so depending on the arrival time, you can measure the order depth. So, okay, let's calculate the order depth. Approximately one one hundred eighty one point four microsecond. Then what will be the um, depth of water? So quiz one, the first one, first question is the travel time from source bottom receiver was in micrometer or microsecond one hundred eighty one point four microsecond. And if we assume the uh, water velocity 1500 meter per second, what's the depth? That's what they would do. 2 L in fact. 1500 times 181.4 times 1000. And then you have to divide it by two. Huh? 13. 13.75. You? Oh, 13.5. Exactly. What are you saying? Huh? Okay. So then, <coughs> without knowing the thickness of this material, the exercise is the finding the the real thickness of this block. Okay. Hundred. Okay. Just make it hundred. Six centimeter. Six centimeter. Oh, six centimeter. Oh, huh? Huh? Okay. Yeah. Surprising, amazing, uh, oh, it's amazing. Uh, so then, next one that we're going to do is that uh, now, what's the impedance change from you have a water to rock? Right? Rock has very high impedance and high velocity and high density. What if you, I put it in the balloon? What happens? What do you mean? Uh, <laughs> she's going to float, yeah. But uh, what will happen to the wave shape? Or the reflection coefficient in terms of the reflection coefficient of the
흘러서 안것 같은데. 우리가 뭘 이렇게 쓰나? 있죠? 있죠? 그죠? So this is to reflect a signal and you have to, you have to capture it. Let's capture it. Let's play. Capture the wave. Okay. We captured it. Because I want to compare it with the granite. Mm. 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 <coughs> mm. It's inverted. You have to see it. Closer, have a closer look. So the first peak is going down for the, uh, um, the for the balloon case. For this one, the first peak is going up. Okay. Oh, that's uh, because the, uh, now the, before this case, you have a low impedance, with high impedance, and the for the balloon is a low impedance, and the other way, a high impedance is a low impedance. Actually, so the physics works okay, in reality. 그거를 해보려고. Okay. 질문. It's got in there, even in the paper by the bottom. Oh. Maybe it could be, yeah, that could be the case. Hmm. Mm. Actually, so the dome with the granite at the back there, also you have a reflection from the bottom. If you uh, enlarge, zoom out the signal, and you have a first reflection at the uh, water and rock interface. And you have a second reflection at the um, rock and the acrylic, the bottom interface. And it, uh, I didn't show you with that experiment. So, so we can just ignore these numbers. Uh, we did it with different numbers. Well, our case was about 180 something. And the, uh, the depth of water was about 13.5 centimeter, and uh, the object thickness was about 6 centimeters. So the numbers are different, but uh, that's how it works. Mm. So if you scan it, so in that case, so the, to get the 2D section, what, what you do is that you capture the signal and you move, and then you also excite the another source, and then you capture the signal, and you move. So you do it for the uh, one profile. So then you can get the 2D section. So this is the case with the, um, uh, in, a, in a chamber with soil, with the anomaly inside. So from here to here, you move the transistor, and then you capture the uh, signal, and then when you display it, you can see, you can uh, distinguish the, the presence of the anomaly. And uh, as I show you, the polarity of this signal can be inverted or it could be the positive polarity 
depending on the impedance voltmeter. So please look at read this paper. This paper is very useful. I can send you one. So the exercise is that you want to make a slope. Probably we we'll, we we'll prepare the slope, and then using the slope and with the same setup, you find out the uh, the surface profile and the average angle, and I'm going to put some anomaly also inside the soil, so and then find out the whether there is the um, high impedance material or the low impedance material. And uh, that's due by October 11, after 2000. The grouping is, how do you group it? We can do the grouping next week, next Monday, because uh, we have some absence. So then, uh, data acquisition. On land, you have an energy source by explosive. Or they are dropping a heavy weight uh, and vibrating metal plate. The plate can be a source. And receiver is the uh, geophone. So. And offshore case, electrical spark can, gen can generate the, uh, the wave and penetrate up to 1.2 two time. And the hydrophone are used as a uh, receiver. Mm -hmm. For the deep exploration, airgun is widely used. And satellite nav navigation system, the GPS are used to pinpoint the location of the shot point and the receiver point. Then, okay, let's go and so on. So, then you have a wave time graph in a continuous seismic section like this. And then, from the reflection point like this, you can identify the uh, location of the interface, the water and the, uh, the sediment interface, and the sediment and maybe salt storm interface. Um, this is the uh, whole procedure. So uh, let's imagine that you have a one shot with the uh, string array of geophone. And then each signal, each geophone will capture the signal like this. Okay? So this is the uh, geophone number one, and geophone number two, geophone number three, and geophone number four, like that. And you have a direct wave coming from the hydrophone, oh, that's, this is the case, so okay. So this is the, uh, the, the hydrophone number one, number two, and number three, and number n, right? Number n. And then you will get a series of wave from one shot. And you all, always have the uh, direct wave coming from here. So it's going to be like this. And then later you have a, a, a postponed arrival of the wave from the reflected signal. So then this is the direct wave, and then you have a sea, flexion, a sea flow reflection and sedimentary reflection. So then first the, uh, remove the noise traces and correct the amplitude for the energy loss at the long travel time. So what this means is that the, as you go below, and also as it took longer time for wave, wave to travel, then the amplitude will diminish because of the attenuation, energy loss. So you have to correct it. So then if you correct it, here you have a very small amplitude reflection, but if you correct it, it becomes more, more visible. And higher amplitude. Then select the traces with a common depth point. Here, uh, maybe you can point, point uh, uh, one, uh, one, two or three, and remove the direct wave. So you remove this direct wave. And then you have a uh, reflection from the water and reflection from the sediment. And then you correct the travel time, uh, the geometry is different. So, for example, so here, 
this one and this one will have a different travel length, right? So if you correct it, then you will be just at the same time interval. And then remove the uh, tail part. We call, we call it coda, wave coda, and the tail part of the uh, wave, each wave, and you get only like one pulse or the one cycle of each reflection, reflective wave. And then you mark it as a, uh, you shade it for the, mm, the positive wiggle and the negative wiggle, just uh, let it as a transparent and you have whole system. So then you collapse it for each location along the distance. So that's how you make the uh, uh, 2D section, seismic profile section. So also there are some detailed techniques to remove the noise. But, uh, there will be too, too much detail. Any question? Okay. Then there are some uh, major components that cause noise. As uh, here, this is the, uh, because of the reverberation between the sea surface and the sea floor, you get this aging section of like with the uh, different noise like this. But the, in, in reality, you don't have that kind of thing. And uh, in Sotom, have the high velocity. So if you have a high velocity anomaly like that, and the original geology should be flat, but uh, you have uh, some velocity pull down like this. And also the, when you have a street, uh, deep angle, and you have also the reflection from the uh, uh, surrounding area like that. So uh, that's what geophysicists do. Um, and they remove the noise and, and they make a clear section as much as they can. Mm. So I think it's just, yeah. <laughs> So the seismic survey is an essential part of the whole cycle of the petroleum exploration and production because it can provide the regional mapping and prospect mapping and reservoir delineation, seismic modeling, uh, hydrocarbon detection, and monitoring of the high petroleum production. I'll talk about the uh, this one, monitoring part later. Okay. Uh, we can skip this one. It's an example of the, uh, the well log. You have a gamma ray and self potential SP and the caliper and the resistivity log and the porosity log so from left to right. So here is the porosity log, porosity log, and the resistivity log, and the <coughs> SP and the gamma ray log. And uh, this is the example of the 3D seismic mapping. So then here, at each depth, you can extract the uh, section. Right? And also, uh, not only the horizontal slices, you can get the, any like uh, inclined section or the vertical and the horizontal section so from the CD seismic data. Uh, so, these are the uh, example of the seismic uh, signature too from each uh, different geologic settings. And then finally what you want to get is this kind of a uh, subsurface vertical profile and uh, vertical map. So this shows that so from the seismic signature, you collaborate with the geologist and the logging scientists. So, so you're interpreting the logging data and the seismic data and the geologic data. And together, you finally, you're going to get this kind of a map showing that which formation have the hydrocarbon. So here, gas source is the orange color, which contains the gas. Oil source is red one, right? And sandstone, silty, shale, silty, mar, mudstone, limestone, shale. So, this gives you the idea that um, how large the reserves are and uh, how much we can extract. Then, which, will be, which area, the, where are the uh, optimal points to drill the hole and uh, make the production well? 
So, and to get this kind of a result, you have to have the login data and the setting data and the query data. So many information are integrated together in this URL section. Um, so I think you can read this through. Okay. So this is the one that we just saw from the experiment. And say that you have a shell with this property, the B velocity is a 2300 meter per second. And uh, this is the sandstone filled with gas, it's 1900 meter per second. And you have a sandstone filled with oil, that's 300, no, 3200 meter per second. So then, when you have a wave coming this direction, let's, say, let's look at the B. Then, from shale to gas to and the stone, all the impedance change. From high to low impedance material, right? So then, the signal will be inverted. And from gas to and the stone to oil field and the stone, then you have also low impedance material to the high impedance material, so then the polarity will be reserved and will be kept. Right? So that's what it does from B. At the B point, so you have an inverted signal, and here you have a, a straight signal. Let's see. And what about the A point? At A, you have shale and the sandstone that's mm, low to high, so then you have also the straight polarity, so the positive polarity, right? like the case C. And that can be estimated or the calculated uh, by the uh, reflection coefficient. So this is the uh, reflection coefficient, okay. R calculated. Question? B is the interface between shale and gas field sandstone. And the C is the uh, interface between gas and uh, hydrocarbon, the, the oil. Right? Okay. So then, um, AV analysis is. Um, okay. Just to uh, briefly explain the AV analysis is the amplitude analysis. So that in general, before people didn't do the um, amplitude analysis because uh, there are too many uncertainties. But uh, so they only look at the reflected signal signature, whether there is a wavelet coming from the interface, and they only analyze the velocity so that they can find out the depths. But nowadays, they also look at the, uh, how strong the amplitudes are. That's the, uh, what AV analysis do, the amplitude variation with offset. Then from the AV analysis, if you look at, if you uh, quantitatively analyze the amplitude of the reflected signal, you can find out the velocity of each stratum and also how much hydrocarbon is there. So that's a more recent technique that this uh, geophysics does at this time. And staging imaging, it's, uh, I guess. And, uh, this is the uh, case you have a, a mud volcano. So that uh, this is the mud, muddy area, and uh, you have a gas coming out of from the deeper region, so that the gas is. coming and the migrated from the deeper region. So that when you have a seismic signal because of the gas, it absorbs all the uh, seismic energy, so you have a kind of a blanking phenomena. So you don't see much of the uh, reflection at this region. So then using this kind of a blanking anomaly, people look at, uh, find the uh, active Free gas migration. Just an example. 
Okay. okay. Let's move on to the next section. So then uh, we'll talk about the four geo physics and 4D seismic and the subsurface geology and remote sensing very quickly. Um, so borehole geophysics is that um, actually Professor Dong Su Jin used to research on this topic before a lot. What, it, what you do is that as you drill in the hole, you place a geophone above the drill bit, and then you pound uh, gen and uh, generate the uh, wave <coughs> signal from the surface. And then the wave will come uh, trans uh, transmit to the media, and then it will be detected by the geophone as you go deeper. And from that, you can identify the layers or the, the different velocity of the media. So that's called the, the borehole geophysics. And there are many geometry, geometrical configuration for the DSP. So you can have the single uh, source and receiver type, and you may have a dip, uh, different sources along the line, and uh, you may have also different uh, multiple receivers along the, uh, the well. And sometimes you have a directional boring, the horizontal uh, boring. So this, there will be a numerous uh, geometric variations. Um, this is the result of the borehole geophysics, uh, BSP, vertical seismic profiling. And 4D seismic, 4D seismic is that uh, if you do it uh, along the line, you get the 2D section, right? And if you do that, do the 2D profiling with the, some space to cover the area, then you get the 3D surface, uh, 3D the volume uh, information, right? And you can come back uh, one month later and do the experiment, do the uh, 3D sizing survey. And after one month later, you do that. So if you repeat it with, over the time, you get the 4D sizing information. Right? So the another dimension is the time. So here, what you can do is that you have a basement base survey, baseline survey at the initial condition. And maybe like one year later, after you produce some petroleum or the oil or gas, and you do the experiment and the exploration, then you can find a difference from here to here. Right? The difference can tell you how the fluid and where the fluid has been moved. And let me give you an example. So this is the uh, very famous example of the 4D seismic. So what they did is in the Slatner <coughs> that's the in, offshore on the North Norway, they injected the CO2 to the depleted oil reservoir uh, to see the feasibility of the CO2 storage in the zero deformation. In 1994, they started injection. This is the baseline uh, survey. And then after they started the injection, 19, five years later, they came and then they did another survey. Uh, there was some plume upward migration, and 2001, and it's been diffused more, right? So from here to here, you can find out the, how the CO2 and, the, uh, and how far the CO2 has been moved. Right? And this is the, uh, the plan view for one slice, the horizontal slice section. And this was the injection point, and it's been propagated to about like 500 meter. Now it's been propagated to this direction major, and it's about maybe 700 or 800 meter. So the 4D seismic exploration is very useful for the uh, timeless imaging and the monitoring tool. Okay. And the subsurface geology. So, um, 
from the login information or you can get the core from the drilling. So the, the main purpose of the drilling is that you want to have the core and you want to identify the, uh, the formation type, whether this is shale or a sandstone or the carbonate. Right? So along with that, then you have a drill hole here and you're gonna do it maybe at the distance for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, the same purpose. Eh? So you have another hole and you have another hole. But then using the information you gathered from this borehole, that could be from the core analysis or that could be from the logging analysis, then you can make a face, faces analysis. So you can get the uh, 2D section along the borehole about the uh, geology information. That's called the uh, geological cross section. So the, how the formation moved and the uh, Sometimes the sandstone was in this area, it, it is very thick. And as you move toward to maybe this direction, the sandstone thickness becomes thicker, uh, thinner and thinner and thinner. Okay. So then you can find out the, uh, the traps and anticline, right? anticline structure, uh, salt dome, that kind of thing. So, and this is the, uh, the vertical cross-section. And you can do it for the, uh, the horizontal cross-section. And mainly in petroleum exploration, structural control map is the uh, critical one, a very useful one. And that delineates the trap and the uh, reserve calculations. So here you can see that the uh, hmm, highlight area and plastic green cases, and with here uh, some other information and the uh, notes there. Such a visual comment. And the last thing, but not the least, is the remote sensing. So remote sensing is, you can use the uh, airborne sur survey, you can use like uh, chopper or airplane, or these days that you can use drones, or you can also use the satellite to have the image. So basically what you can do is that, it's like a taking a picture at different frequency. So you can take the image at, from the visible range, then you, you'll see what you see from your naked eye, and you can take the picture with infrared or the ultraviolet or maybe radio frequencies, or with the different frequency you can map, you can take the photo of our surface. Then it gives you a different, hmm, different information. So sun's electromagnetic wave are filtered through the atmosphere and it could be absorbed by or reflected from the surface. For example, um, infrared is very sensitive to temperature. So if you take the infrared picture from the satellite, you can find out the low temperature region and the high temperature region. And that is directly related to what? The wood or like the cover by the, uh, the veg vegetable, vegetation. And also you can differentiate the uh, surface water and the uh, just exposed uh, soil. You have a soil next to the reservoir or the next to the lake, then the infrared can tell you that the, uh, the very location, the how large it is. And also, if there's a desert and some vegetated area, then it will show you a very big difference. So uh, that's very uh, useful spectrum that we can use. And there are some other regions, like microwave and the radio frequencies that we can use for the satellite imaging. And so this the remote sensing is very large discipline in the geomorphologist and the geography, ah, the, the one who studies the geography. The conventional area topography is that you take the pictures from the um, Airplane, air photo, uh, stereographic, stereoscopic view. Mm, 
to you in the end. And stereograph of the air photo is the, the way we did for uh, in 1970s and 1960s, maybe even before that. It's like a, you have a 3D movie. So that you have a pictures from the different angle, and from there you can find out the altitude of the surface. And these days, you can take the photo very easily, and then you can just make a different filter. Maybe one picture with the uh, red filters, and one picture with the blue filters, and then you just combine it, and you see it with the glasses, and you have a, what do you call that, 3D. This, structure or the 3D volumetric images. Mm. I wish I can have some class for this kind of pictures. Okay, so LIDAR. Mm. LIDAR uses the microwave. And it captures the uh, reflective wave from the uh, surface. So it penetrates the cloud cover and haze and can be used at the night as well as during the day. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, some frequency are very sensitive to the moisture. So in this case, if you have a cloud or the haze or the rain, then the, your picture, the, the information you gather can be uh, quite different, different to use. So uh, microwave has an uh, advantage over uh, the other frequency on this the cloud and the haze condition. And larger the an antenna, the better the resolution for a given wavelength. And airplane and the satellite can have this kind of a setup and you can implement into airplane and the satellite. And uh, you can there's in the book, in the textbook, you can find more details, or there you can Google it at the website. And these days, people use the, uh, the satellite image for different purposes. They can use for, maybe if you are interested in the urban engineering, you have to take the GIS course and the satellite, the, uh, how you interpret the satellite images, right? And I think the landslide case, the people who study the landslide or the slope stability also use their, their satellite images to find out the, which are the vulnerable region and, uh, what, and whether you can expect, you can predict the uh, landslide risk from this information. 